Shalom, shalom, mishpaka. I pray all is well with each and every one of you. Today I want to talk about um, 2 Chronicles 7.14. Many people talk about this scripture and it's used almost like a catchphrase, a time of like a day of fasting and praying. Um, but it's so much more than that. So um, as I talk about this, I'm going to go ahead and read the verse. Second Chronicles 7.14 If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, Shamaim, and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. This is more than a day. This is a lifestyle. We are in our captivity because of sin. If you read Second Chronicles 7, 14 and go all the way down, Yahuwah goes on to say, but if you don't obey and keep these laws, statutes, and judgments, I will pluck you out of the land. So in this passage, He's giving a prophecy that has been fulfilled. We did not obey. So we were plucked up out of the land. So in this time, we are to humble ourselves. And humbling is a lifestyle. After choosing pride and rebellion and idolatry, as we come to know who we are, being debased is required. Being humble is required in every aspect of our lives. And then we are to seek Yah's face and turn to Shub, to Shuva, turn from our wicked ways. And a lot of people. They, um, they may stop for a period of time. Oh, I'm going to stop this sin. But then when they don't get any result, they quickly turn back. Have you ever corrected your child on something? And, oh, well, it is not worth it. So they end up going back to that behavior that was wicked. Because they're looking for a reward. Yah is saying in this passage... For his chosen ones, they will humble themselves. They will seek his face and they will turn from their wicked ways in and out of season. That is when Yah says he will hear from the Shamayim and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Many people do come to this truth because they got scared. They thought, you know, the Most High is coming back. I don't want to go to the lake of fire. So it was like a temporary thing. But when it came down to it and the years passed and they didn't get rewarded for their behavior, they quickly returned back to their wicked ways. That's not, to the, that's not the remnant. The remnant is steadfast in turning from their wicked ways. Steadfast in remaining humble. And seeking the face of Yahuwah. And waiting on him to forgive our sins and to heal the land. Micah, or Micah, or Micah, excuse me, or Micah in English, 7 and 7 through 9 says, Therefore I will look unto Yahuwah. I will wait for the Alua of my salvation. My Alua will hear me. Rejoice not against me. O oh, my enemy, when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, Yahuwah shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of Yahuwah because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. This lets us know a lot of people came into this awakening, 
Yes, he did some miraculous things. Yes, he gave us some healing and some deliverance. Did he fully deliver us? And we're back in our land and free from everything? No, he has not yet to do that. We are to wait on Yahuwah. And know that he shall arise when I sit in darkness. He will deliver us in the darkness. Yahuwah shall be the light unto us. We must bear the indignation because we did sin against Yah. Many people don't want to bear the indignation. We must bear the indignation and continue to remain humble, continue to seek Yah's face, continue to turn from sin until he rises up to execute judgment, until he chooses to plead our cause. This is what we must do. It is not something like a deception where we think his days are our days. His one day is not the same as our day. He's looking for those that are steadfast and long-suffering and continuously seeking his face with or without a reward. They're not doing it because they're looking for a reward. They're doing it because they are now operating in the integrity and in the likeness of Yah. Whether all hell breaks loose, they choose the character and ways of Yahuwah. Going to Husha, Hosea 10, 12 through 13. It says, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek Yahuwah till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped iniquity, ye have eaten the fruit of lies because you trusted in your way and the multitude of your mighty men. This is also letting you know so before you, we have sowed wickedness and we've reaped our iniquity. We have eaten the fruit of lies because we trusted in our own way and in the multitude of the mighty men. But now that we know better, now that we have been revealed his precious truth, we must sow in righteousness so we can reap in mercy. We must break up the fallow ground and continuously seek Yah till he come. So this lets us know it's a waiting period. Many people don't want to wait. Many people are looking for, if he don't do it right now, I'm just going to go back to my wickedness. But Yah clearly says, no, he's looking for the ones that are going to sow in righteousness, continue to wait on him, continue to seek him. Until the righteousness is poured down upon us. Husha, Hosea 12 and 6 says, Therefore, turn to Yahuwah, guard mercy and judgment, and wait on Yahuwah continually. How long? Continually. We are to wait on Yahuwah continually. And while we're waiting, we are to be humble. We are to seek his face. We are to turn from our wicked ways. And we are to sow in righteousness. Hosea, Husha 13 and 9 says, O Yashrael, you have destroyed yourself, but in me is your help. So if Yahuwah is our help, we are to seek Yahuwah because we have destroyed ourselves. Only in Yahuwah is our help. Husha 14, 1 through 5. O Yashrael, return unto Yahuwah Alua, for you have fallen by your iniquity. Take with you words and turn to all Yahuwah. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So will we render the bulls of our lips. Ashur shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands. Ye are our Elohim. For in you the fatherless finds mercy. Then Yahuwah says, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For my anger is turned away from him, 
I will be as the dew unto Yashra'al. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. Hallelujah. So he will take away the backsliding, but we must wait on him. We must seek his face. We must turn from our wicked ways and remain humble. Husha 14, 6 through 9 says, His branches shall spread, and his beauty shall be as the olive tree, and his smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall revive as the grain and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. For me is your fruit found. Who is wise? And he shall understand these things. Prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of Yahuwah are right, and the just shall walk in them. But the transgressors shall fall therein. And this is letting us know those who have the right way of Yahuwah who is wise, shall understand. They shall seek the face of Yah, turn from wicked ways, sow to themselves in righteousness, humble themselves, and follow the ways and judgments of Yah. But the transgression shall continue to fall therein in wickedness. The transgressors shall continue to fall in wickedness. So we're going to go to Yoel, Joel 2, 12 through 16. It says, Therefore also now, says Yahuwah, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto all Yahuwah, Allah Hakim, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repents of the evil. Who knows if he will return and repent? And leave a baraka behind him. Even an oblation and a drink offering unto Yahuwah Allah King. Blow the shofar in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the assembly. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that set the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priest... The ministers of Yahuwah weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare your people, O Yahuwah, and give not your heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their Alua? Then will Yahuwah be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, Yahuwah will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you grain and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far off from you the northern army, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea, and his hinder part toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he has done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. For Yahuwah will do great things. Hallelujah. So Yahuwah has said he will do great things. But we must continue to seek his face. Continue to cry out before him. Continue to turn from our wicked ways. Sowing to ourselves in righteousness. That he may rain righteousness upon us. That he may remember us and be jealous of us and hear our cry. But this is a process. This is not something that happens overnight. This is not something that we just say, oh, I fasted and prayed one day, I'm good. I repented of all my sins, I'm good. No, this is a process. He's looking for those that are steadfast and in and out of season. And it goes on to read in Joel. It says, Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree bears her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. 
and children of Zion, rejoice and be glad in Yahuwah Elua, because he gives to us the righteous teaching, which descends on us like a teaching rain and a latter rain in the first of the year. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of Yahuwah, Allah Hakim, that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Yahshua'el, and that I am Yahuwah Alua, and no one else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Hallelujah. So he says, and afterwards, after all of these things, after he turns back our captivity and restores us, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Ruach upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my Ruach. He needs us to be sanctified. He needs us to turn from wickedness. He needs us to seek his face diligently until he rains righteousness upon us. When, we, when Yah says he will do a quick work, it's a quick work in his time. Not necessarily a quick work in our time in the microwave mindset. So be steadfast, be unmovable, remain humble, and turn from all wickedness. Cry out unto him, repent until he restores righteousness upon us. So with that, Mishpaka, I say shalom and much Shalom, shalom.